All right, single here, Israel National Radio. As I promised, this is going to be an enormous treat. A man who's an internationally renowned speaker and a dear, dear friend of mine. In fact, he spent the last day of Sukkot with me in the Jewish court of the old city. He's a scholar across numerous disciplines, one of the most dynamic Jewish educators in the world today. And you know, when I say things like that, I don't, I, this is not flurry talk. This is, this is the deal. Check this out. He's delivered lectures, uh, courses around the globe in diverse topics from modern and biblical Hebrew to Kabbalah and Jewish history. In fact, one of his most amazing talks that he gives is literally teaching all of Jewish history in, take a deep breath on this one, in one hour. Uh, he left Australia back in December 9th of 2006. Dave and his wife Marjorie, they lost, they launched this series. It's called In, in One Hour Series. And incidentally, the website address is in one hour dot net. Okay. And uh, by launching this series, and it's been going on here in Jerusalem, he's just come back from a stint in England, New York. Um, David uh, has really set himself up as one of the leading international educators and speakers. And what the, basically what, that, what the whole one-hour series is about, let me just give it to you in short. It's a mind-blower, but it essentially just brings together David's innovative educational talks. Each one, every one of them serves as a, a basic introduction to a range of areas in Jewish studies. The introductions are based on traditional Jewish sources combined with original visual maps and techniques. You don't know what this man does. I'm not even going into it. You've got to attend one of these things. But he puts paper around the room and he teaches. There's even some of the stuff you can see it on YouTube, okay? And these fun, this is fundamental Judaism here. This is not the parsley on the side. This is the, scent. This is the steak. In these fundamental teachings, there, are, there's a compre, there is a framework that's mind-blowing, and it's designed to promote Jewish learning. The, the aim of this journey is not just some academic thing we'll learn about history, but it's the, to ensure that the audience is a literally equipped and inspired to pursue further study in this field. And that's why David Solomon, in onehour.net, my friend, he is joining us, not just on this show, but on future shows. We are going through Tanakh. We're going through a journey. We're going on a journey through the Bible in a way that you have never done before in your life. David Solomon, welcome to Israel National Radio. Thank you, Tovia. I'm trying to work out where this guy is you've just described. I really want to go and listen to him. Well, you, we, we've, been, you, we've been together in the Jewish Quarter over We the, have. And I'm going to tell your listeners something they don't know about time. you because it's true. We did spend Shmini Atzeret, which is the last day of the whole High Holy Days festival season. It's an amazing festival, Shmini Atzeret. And we spent it with you here in the old city of Jerusalem, literally 50 meters from the Western Wall, where we spent a lot of the time going back and forth and I need to tell your listeners something they probably don't know about you having now spent intimate time with you in your home and over this festive period is that Tovia Singer is an amazing cook he is not just I'm not just talking about like you, you know, know it's like someone, da David gets like international scholar leading lecturer I get family fabulous cook because all the other stuff they already know about they you do. they know they that do. you're a I am a, a great a scholar cook. yourself yes. and an incredible personality and in a the very Jewish big world tzaddik. and a big tzaddik and a big talmud yes. chacham. But the real truth is, yes. do you make a wicked chalant? Yeah, I make a crazy chalant. It's and unbelievable. I, and I want you. And know, it wasn't even Shabbos. He made this chalant, and like I, I mean, it's it's the chalant eats you. You don't eat it. It's it's phenomenal. I got to ask you a question, David, yeah. because I, I, you know, before we can even engage in something so sacred, because we're we're going into a. a, a we're going into a world that David and I each went into independently, and that is not just to study Bible, study Scripture, but actually to walk into it and to come out on the other, to understand what is the Bible really saying, what is the message, not just historically from the past, but actually to extrapolate it in the, in the unimaginable time we're living in right now. You and I, 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 I live here in the Jewish Quarter. You were my guest here over, over the Chag, you and your wife, Marjorie. And you could see, looking out the window, you see the, the Temple Mount itself. 
Beyond that, you see the Mount of Olives. You have s- devoted your life to studying Tanakh, and you know about prophecy, mm. the prophecy of the Mount of Olives splitting with a king, a final redeemer from the house of David, bringing about the final redemption, the reunification of the Jewish people here in this land, bring about a worldwide peace, uh, bring about the temple that will stand on Mount Moriah, literally just a couple hundred feet from where we that are right now. That temple which will be a symbol of peace for the whole world. So what I want to do, here's what I want to do with you, because we're going on a journey. Uh, we'll go, we're, and, I, and I say this to the listeners, remove your shoes for the place you are standing is holy. We're going into a special place now. So we're waiting for this final king from the sign of the house of David, who the Bible actually refers to as David. Why is the king so important? I understand why worldwide peace is important. David, I understand why it's, it's when Isaiah 54 describes how every every tongue will praise God, every knee will bow to him. I understand that. Why is God's glory? But why do we need a human king? And we're going back to 1 Samuel when the Jewish people asked for a king. Why do we need a human king like the nations of the world? The truth is, as was so famously echoed by the prophet Samuel, we don't. Ultimately, the people of Israel the real physical entity. I'm not talking about some abstract spiritual concept here. There is a physical entity today that is known as the Jewish people because we are the remnant of the physical people of Israel. The people of Israel are a unique people with a unique opportunity and destiny in history who are the one people who precisely don't need an intermediary between themselves and God. They don't need someone that can stand in front and give them orders because really our destiny is in our own hands. We as a united people, there is absolutely nothing in this universe that we cannot achieve because we we have the potential to manifest the full will of God by ourselves without any structured leadership. We need prophets. We need Nevi'im because they are the vehicles, they are the transmitters of the word of God. But do we need a guy from one of the tribes who's going to stand up and start building a palace for himself and giving orders to people and set up a whole nobility and hierarchy with all that that involves? Do we need that when we have one father in heaven who is our king, who has a direct relationship with the Jewish people that we see every single day and that has brought this nation through history to this unique moment, to this unique time, to this unique space. Do we need a king? Well, the truth is that the last time you and I spoke on air, we already jumped right into the hot water of the kings and we started really, we started talking about Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, and his son, and how the 12 tribes became split, and we went into all that. And in that time, when we've spoken about the possibility of uh, continuing our discussion, you know, I thought that really what would be good for us and for the listeners is to go back and look at this whole story square on from the beginning and to try and work this question out about how the whole concept of kingship comes about and how the concept of kingship is culminated in the ultimate king that is yet to come who will be the full manifestation of what King David hmm. was and is and will be because David Melech Yisrael Chai V'Kayam David the king of Israel is alive and forever it's his the Ruach David King David gave Am Yisrael this concept of Ruach this concept of the spirit of kingship the spirit of God that infuses the Jewish people the whole book of Psalms is about that and I, I just ask you this I want to um, really highlight this question that we're asking here because although we don't have the king we don't go to Saul and then King David you know, until we're in the book of Samuel, mm. um, there are other classes that have already been set aside for a leadership position back in the Torah. 
for example, the, the, the priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, the, the children of Aaron have a very special role. So that's been identified. But yet, a king has not been set over the Jewish people. And in fact, it, it hasn't. Be, and even though, as we said last time, even though there are verses that explicitly state what should happen if there is a king, right. Som Tasim Alech Amelech is in fact, you will surely put over yourselves a king. It's as much a prophecy as it is an instruction about how to go about it.